Hello and welcome to The Versatile Artist. Thank you for being here again. Thank you for all the lovely comments on last week's video and also um, our situation. Uh, that really means a lot to me. And today's video is a very special episode. It's, it's a new format, something I've never done before. So it's, um, I'm rather nervous about it. <laughs> But it's something I intend to do maybe on a monthly basis, at least quite frequently in the future, because it, I think it opens up new perspe perspectives on creativity and different approaches to a creative life. So, um, as you know, my family and I are currently in quarantine. And if you want to more, know more about that, uh, there's a video on my Patreon page um, that you can watch. Um, this is where I actually usually share a bit more personal stuff. So if you're interested in that, look into that. If you can actually subscribe for just one euro per month. Uh, and you have access to a lot of my creative work that I don't share anywhere else. And there's also a really lovely community there. So maybe you want to consider that. Anyway, um, so since I can't go outside, I was thinking what I could do this week as a video. Or what, uh, and usually I take a lot of my inspiration from going outside, from going on walks and things like that. But then I remembered something I have been thinking about for quite a while but then you know sometimes you need life that gives you a decent kick in your backside so that you actually do that so I am really happy that I can do it today so I finally do what I've always wanted to do invite other artists to share their thoughts and their experiences all around a creative life. Through that, I think you get a more of a varied perspective on what it can mean to live a creative life. Today, I'm very happy to launch this new series of interviews with someone I'm honored to call my colleague and friend. She's the published author of seven books and several plays that are bursting with intelligent humor and depth. Originally from a small village in North Germany, She's the youngest of four siblings. She studied German, English, politics and journalism at the universities of Rostock and Vienna and has a doctor of philosophy. Her newest novel, Johanna spielt das Leben, Johanna plays the life, has just been released and is not just by my account, probably her best work to this date. In this prequel to a showstopper book, Anatol studiert das Leben, Anatol studies life, she tells the funny yet profound story of Anatol's grandmother, the famous Burg theater actress Johanna, who finds herself within the turbulences of love, motherhood, emancipation, and intrigue behind the curtains of Vienna's biggest theater. Her skill to create engaging characters and stories that make you laugh and cry within pages have made her one of my favorite authors. Her books have been a sanctuary through the last challenging year and I'm more than delighted to welcome today Susanne Falk. Thank you so much. <laughs> that was so lovely. Thank you, Romana. <laughs> I'm really Very happy to be here. <laughs> Such a pleasure to have you here. <laughs> pleasure to be with you. Yeah, and I can't wait to meet you again uh, in real life. So in for everyone <laughs> who's watching this, we're usually not speaking in English with each other. So it's a quite unusual situation for us. It is. It, it definitely is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, okay, I will just dive into the questions that I have for you. And yeah, I'm very, very curious what you have to say. Okay. So first, let me say I could not have anyone better to start off this series really and I was hoping that you would say yes <laughs> I'm really happy. It's, so, it's so lovely because it's the first interview I do for for my new book and uh, it's also the first interview ever in English <laughs> so yay <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, I mean, we have known each other for, I think, a couple of years now. And I think what really made us click was a shared sense of humor. And, okay. <laughs> you know, for anyone who doesn't know uh, about Austrians and Germans, actually, it is said that the um, humor is not really compatible, but you really prove the opposite. It's, it's really the opposite because <laughs> I don't know anyone who's funnier than you, actually. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, uh, what, what really is that uh, maybe we, we both are kind of, um, we both like British humour, don't we? Yes. And uh, the thing is, uh, the region I'm from in, is very much in the north of Germany and uh, it's called Angeln. And uh, it's, it's the region, original region are uh, still named after the Anglos and that moved to Britain. So it's much more British humour than anything else. <laughs> you, know, you can't compare people from our region to anyone in, in Bavaria or somewhere else, uh, because the humour is not, uh, it, it's much closer to the British humour than any other German humour. <laughs> so very dark. <laughs> that makes total sense. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we have a guest too. There's my cat, Teddy. Hi, Teddy. <laughs> nice to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is his room, so we can't, can't just kick him out. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. So this is your answer whenever someone comes up with this prejudice. That it's this, my answer, yeah. I'm more British. You're more British. Which is absolutely wrong because I'm very German in, in many ways. But um, I live in Austria for nearly the same time like I lived in, in Germany. It's now 22 years. Yeah. Then 43 very years old, and 22 years in Germany, one in Italy, and then 22 years now in, in, uh, in Austria. So you're totally assimilated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, um, let's just pick up there that you uh, move. Um, grew up in North Germany as the youngest of four children. Yeah. So how was that for you? How did, do you think this shaped you? Oh, in a lot of ways. Cause um, I uh, always said, I didn't have uh, two um, parents, I have five. <laughs> so it's uh, two sisters and one brother. And I love them very dearly, all of them. And we, we're kind of close, although we don't live in the same area and we live really across the country and, and me in Austria. So um, well, we, we've uh, text each other and we phone each other. And it's, it's really, it was a very warm house and a very um, loving household. So um, all kind of close together. And when they all moved out, because they are, um, my elder sister is 12 years older than me and the then comes my brother is nine years older and then my other sister who's uh, more than five years older than me and I was quite a long time with my parents just on my own and I, I missed them so much and I do until now um so it's it's really lovely I love having people around me because I I can't really stand uh, being alone because <laughs> I'm never <laughs> used to that it was yeah. all crowded and uh, it was all like um do you know the song by madness uh, yeah our house that was really our house it was in the <laughs> middle of the street and was always something going on it was usually quite loud <laughs> <laughs> that was definitely uh like i grew up yeah yeah, yeah. i mean that you radiate that and every time we meet and speak i think you always mention one member of your family and that there was some interaction going on just on that day or at least <laughs> very very recently so yeah, um, that, that's very beautiful to hear. And I, in a way, I think this is also reflected in a lot of your books that you are, have this close knit family. And at the same time, in, in, in some of your books, you have these super extreme conflicts in the families. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going into that a bit deeper a little later, but when did you know that you wanted to be a writer and and how did your journey start that's a lovely story because i was just four or five years old and i couldn't even read or write but <laughs> <laughs> my parents used to we used to go uh, uh on the holidays to denmark because i uh, grew up next to the danish borderline and then um one day my mom said no we're going to sweden this year i said why 
<laughs> and she said, yeah, well, something different. So um, we moved, so we went to Sweden for, I think, three weeks. Uh, and my mom was like, no, we can't just go bathing all the time. We need to do something cultural uh, to learn to learn Sweden uh, th the best way it is. And um, so she decided to take us to Morbaka, which is um, um, the house of uh, the famous Nobel Prize winner, Selma Lagerlöf, you might know as the author of uh, Niels Holgersson. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knew the book. It was one of the first books I've, I've ever known because my father read it to me. And uh, I remember it was a very beautiful day in, in, in summertime in Sweden. And we stood, uh, I don't know where, but I, I could see the whole house, which is an absolute beautiful house. It's a museum today that you can visit as we did. And uh, you can imagine this beautiful summer day in Sweden and loads of Swedish blonde children running around. And there was a huge tree and there was, um, a uh, swing in the tree and my mom just linked down to me and said, Susanna, look at this. This is the house of the writer Selma Lagerlöf. Isn't it wonderful? And I was like, yeah, I want a house like that. I become a writer. <laughs> it was absolutely wrong, <laughs> but it still stick to me. Mm -hmm. And then I started writing when I was about seven, nearly eight years old and continue doing so after that. So well, I don't know what clicked in within me. So I knew that this was what I wanted. Wow. <laughs> but it was definitely uh, not the house, uh, but yeah. The, what the, was the first the, thing you wrote? Do you remember that? Oh yeah, and I published it once. It was a story about um, uh, Father Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, it was four sentences long. Like uh, Father Christmas uh, couldn't go outside because he had just short trousers, and so she. Oh no. He hadn't had any chance to bring any presents, but then he retired, and there came a new Father Christmas, and he got long trousers, and then he could go outside again. And that is pretty much the whole story. With about uh, I don't know uh, twenty five misspellings in there. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Cute. <laughs> that was the start. Really lovely. It's amazing that you knew that so early. I mean, <laughs> even before you could actually write and give me what that could read or write. But um, mean. <laughs> literature was very much present in the household because my mom was was completely book nerd, okay. <laughs> Is, and up until now. And um, yeah, my, my father read to us a lot. Um, he has a very lovely voice. It's like a, 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 the person you always want to read fairy tales to you. This is mm -hmm. my father's voice. And oh, it's lovely. Oh, that's amazing to have something like that to grow yeah. up with. Yeah. Very inspiring for sure, definitely. Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> okay, so you have, in the meanwhile, published seven books and written yeah. multiple plays that you have that have been on stages in Germany and in Austria. Am I right? No, uh, not in Germany, yeah, because that uh, didn't happen oh, because of Corona. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, it would have been corona, been last yeah. year in, in Bonn, but it didn't. And uh, we're not sure if, if it will happen. Yeah. We don't know if the theatre will survive it. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Exactly. Hopefully. Hopefully it will, uh, but there are no plans uh, right now uh, okay. when it will come up yeah. this year or not. Mm. So, but your newest novel is Johanna spielt das Leben. So mm -hmm. Johanna plays the life. How did you come up with that story and what is it about? Well, it's it's the second part, a second book about the family of the Neuendorf, um, which is um, based on the first part is Anatole studies life. And um, Anatole has a very uh, strange grandmother who's a lovely character, but very weird. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's, a, she's a famous uh, theater actress, which is not based on a real um, person. It, it is a fictional character. And uh, so um, when I finished Anatole, uh, about in the year uh, 2018, was that? I think so, yeah. And then uh, usually when you finish a book, um, uh, you, do, you can let it go. You know, I normally can let things go and that's fine and it's published and wonderful. And the char characters that are so in your head for all the time you're writing, um, they, they stop talking. Joanna didn't stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds like, like <laughs> it's just like 
so annoying. It's like going blah, 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 blah all the day long. And you're like, okay, I write a second novel on you. <laughs> and that's how it started. And then it goes like, yeah, but I didn't want to write about you as an old woman because uh, she appears as in Anatole as an old woman as, as uh, over 80 years old. So we're going back in time and show you how you become who you are today. Mm -hmm. And this is how it started. Yeah. I mean, Johanna is the anti-heroic heroine to, in, in a way, and she's not exactly someone who was born to be a mother, but she is incredibly strong and, and she has to overcome real hardship in that story. And without giving away the details, what drove you writing that story and what did you want to bring across other than that she, I mean, this is very strong that she wouldn't shut up. <laughs> Well, uh, on one hand, it was um, pretty much myself being an artist or being a writer and having uh, um, having to somehow bring this together with your own family life. And so that is something really tough to do. And um, I thought, so I didn't want to write about a writer because novels, writers write about writers, that is such a cliche. <laughs> <laughs> so I did someone else and so she was an actress and, and that was something um, that makes you um, feel a bit distance to it as it brings a bit distance between you and your and your figure but um, you're close enough to, to talk about someone who's uh, still an artist and has to deal with a lot of problems you're dealing with too but she deals with them in a way that I would never do because um, if I would be uh, me in my worst moments uh, as a mother uh, or me in my worst moments as a person is probably closer to Joanna. <laughs> than, <laughs> but yeah, there is a dark side within every one of us and uh, within every mother. And uh, this, she, it was a wonderful way of letting this all out. Mm -hmm. uh, doing this. Yeah. Things Joanna does that I would never do. But um, yeah was was good to do with her <laughs> and this is generally great about being an artist that you can express things that yeah like dark sides of ourselves desires wishes all these things we have inside of ourselves but our own ethics our own morals would never allow to do them and mm -hmm. sometimes they would be even dangerous for either ourselves or others but to express it either by writing about it or yeah, Johanna does it actually as an actress on stage. She does exactly that. And, yeah, and I think it's what makes you go into that profession, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy that very much. I mean, Lady Macbeth the, the darkest is my favorite. Fact, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be the baddie is the funniest as an actress, yeah. honestly. I mean, it takes a while to get there to overcome this oh gosh, what is everybody else going to think about me when I'm as bad as this person? But as you said, it's in all of us, this darkness. And in the, I find this is actually a very healthy way to deal with it. It's to fun. give it space. It's catharsis. Yeah. Did you say that catharsis? Catharsis, <laughs> yeah. I spelled it right. Yeah, yeah. catharsis because, in the German. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, then it's, it's done. You know, you have felt the feeling you have done it mm -hmm. in a way and, I, and um i'm sure it during the writing process something very similar is happening mm -hmm. it does it does yeah. so um yeah you can you can just let it all out <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so what in general is your process how do you come up with ideas how do you research and how many words a day are you writing <laughs> oh, it's very difficult um, different. So um, I always start with the characters. So other people go from um, uh, the style, the writing, they come from the words directly, <laughs> or um, they go up with the theme. For me, it always starts with uh, the figures, um, the personnel in, within the novel. So you always have a tone of a voice uh, you're trying to find of that specific uh, protagonist. And if you've got it, then all the other things around appear. Mm -hmm. So it's always it's always uh, uh, about uh, the the main protagonist and, and uh, all the other uh, people appearing in in the novel, and not so much about uh, the style mm -hmm. that comes later. So this is always the point to start. 
Yeah. And we it makes a lot common, of fun. By the way, it's so funny. We have that in common as well. Yeah, I think it's probably <laughs> even the easiest way to start because um, if you if you just rewrite every sentence until you think it's mm -hmm. it's now it's probably the tone I want to have it takes you ages and that is something where we do have in common we don't have ages because no. uh, a time to write a time to act and it, it's just so limited when you have a day job too and you have the family so you yeah. need to go on and, and, and on and write just um there needs to be something there you can work with it later on but you need to just um i call that text shepherd <laughs> i've never been a perfectionist by the way yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely not a professional. No, as a yeah. perfectionist. So um, it's just, it needs to be something there to work with. And yeah. so I'm, I'm trying to do one page per day. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you want to have a novel by, by the end of the year that you then rewrite and rewrite and rewrite, and it takes about one and a half years, so probably Joanna took two, took two years. And uh, that's, it's about, uh, the pages are right and sometimes you're good in, in a good mood and then you make probably three or four pages per day yeah. but usually it's trying to do one page per day i mean you can only edit what you have written down anyway so yeah. it's, it, there's no no um good reason for pondering upon every single word while you're writing it because it will just hinder you and most likely lead to a writer's block which no one yeah. needs <laughs> Yeah. The I mean, good thing is when you never when you never have the feeling like um you've got never the time to to write yourself out like um I've got like eight hours per day and then I can all spend them writing. This is something we don't have. Exactly. Uh, I especially don't have. And so you never you you always have to stop before you already told everything you want to tell. So you always know the other day what to start with yeah and that makes it really easy and so you don't uh get this um um yeah writers <laughs> and it's also a special time because it's not we can't take it for granted that we have it this time mm -hmm. for for our creative work because yeah as you said we have all these other commitments that demand a, a lot of our energy and our time mm -hmm. and uh I think that's also very helpful for the creative process. We can't procrastinate in any way. <laughs> Occasionally, I, it might happen, I would say, but I'm, that's, I mean, very rare because there is simply no time for that. No. no. So uh, at this point, Johanna Spielt das Leben is only available in German. Are there any plans that it will be published in different languages? Not yet. Not mm -hmm. yet. Hopefully, it will. <laughs> one day. Um, I have absolutely no idea. But it would be just great. It comes out this day. So, and because there had no been uh, no no uh, book sh book fair has been. So, um, I have no idea how they sell uh, rights to foreign countries right now mm. at the moment. So. Ah, okay. Yeah, but it will be really great because I think the stories are, are very universal stories and at the same time they, they are um, centering around something where, I mean, you you are obviously assimilated <laughs> here because uh, I, th I think the way you are able to portray the Viennese soul, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, maybe because you have also this outside a point of view but at the same time you you live it as well yeah. and, and and that's why i mean you are you, you could really be the messenger for that with the book with your books as you are for the um because of the the first books were all in germany and in italy and all places i've been so yeah. it's all um where where i've been to so the first one is in italy uh, set in Italy and I've lived in Italy for about a year mm -hmm. and uh, then um, was a book about my great 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 grandfather who lived in who was a famous sculptor and lived in uh, Saxon mm -hmm. and so there's a connection and then two books about um, northern Germany the home region I'm from actually and then uh, I made the move to Vienna in my books <laughs> mm -hmm. and that was uh, Anatole and now Joanna and yeah the christmas stories were all around the world <laughs> it is a bit yeah. of christmas stories but um yeah. staple 
during our Christmas <laughs> or pre-Christmas time. It was actually the, the bedtime stories. Maybe not every story was 100% appropriate for the little one. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes even my eight-year-old one was frowning i would say <laughs> but i enjoyed it very much <laughs> yeah, these are stories for adults who haven't been made for children <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> i'll take that into account next year yeah not, <laughs> or not next year actually this year because we are Is already it? it's 21. March. can you believe it's march already no no not really <laughs> Oh, no, <laughs> I'm really surprised. it's so weird. Yeah. Um, okay, um, since I really love Johanna as a character so much, will there be a, a third book on her? Hopefully, yes. Uh, depends a bit on the publisher, depends on, on uh, the, the selling uh, of Joanna, but I would love to, because I think this relationship between Joanna and her daughter um, that we just meet as an anatomical meet her as a mother, but mm -hmm. she's just one of the um, um, not so important characters. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, then um, I see she's a side character and, and Joanna, she's uh, just a baby. And I would love to meet Laura, who's her name. I would love to meet her as a young woman. And the mother daughter relationship is really tricky either. <laughs> so that uh, might be something to write about. But yeah. Yeah. But right at the time, I don't have any time for starting such a huge project because every mm -hmm. time you start a novel, it's always like you have to be careful to find an, a theme that really gets you because, in, you know, oh gosh, I'm trapped in this for two years now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Um, uh, so um, it's very lovely. Just I'm um, right now. I'm just writing short stories, and that is really a relief. <laughs> They're like that's nice. Yeah, I didn't have to commit to to a project for two years or even longer. So I can go on with one story and probably the next one next week, and that's a bit easier right now. Will they be published through your publisher or in in? A I also don't know right now. Ah, okay. <laughs> It's just something. waiting for that answer. <laughs> no, not sure yet, but hopefully, yes. Hope I can get to read them. Though. Sure, you do. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, I, I had the huge privilege that I could read Johanna long before its release. Hey, we were one of the first readers <laughs> ever. <laughs> Even before my mom, I think. No, it was my mom first. Because usually okay, that's that's, that's fine. I'm I'm okay with that. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, all of your family are totally fine. <laughs> no, it's just my mom. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> Nobody else until oh. now, because we're still waiting for the books to be sent out. <laughs> okay, now I feel really privileged. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> you know, oh, they also forced you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't feel forced, and I think it was. It was really the perfect time because I had just finished something else mm -hmm. and I was looking for something, um, yeah, yeah, something that lighthearted with depth and and entertaining and yeah, all these things. But um, because I'm a very picky reader, Are very, you? very picky. Yeah, I'm actually really? very picky. I did yeah. not. <laughs> I get bored very easily. I have. I have started a lot of books that I never finished reading because I was so bored by them. And I can't push through things that bore me very much because I, I, I don't want to waste my lifetime. That's what you do when you get older. You start when, when you're younger, you like, uh, yeah, I've got to read this through because it's a yeah. piece of work and you're like, no, it's, it's bullshit. It's so boring. I don't want to spend yeah. my time. I mean, there are actual classics that I couldn't, finish reading some of them yeah a, a whole lot of them yeah <laughs> and i will never tell you which ones or at least not in such a format because no. it's quite embarrassing which <laughs> ones but everybody says you have to read them yeah i try yeah, sure. <laughs> no but um that was um last year while i was um we, my, my husband and i were on the weekend on the anniversary weekend somewhere when, mm -hmm. when there was no lockdown so. mm -hmm. <laughs> and we could actually go somewhere and I was reading um, Lieber's Nord, Nord, Ost, mm -hmm. so Love from North, North, East, one of your books, obviously, and 
while I was sitting uh, in the car, I was not driving, obviously. <laughs> I sent you a message asking you if someone has ever considered making a film out of it, because it, in general, your films, uh, your books really lend themselves for films. So I think they're destined to be turned into films. Has anyone ever approached you other than me? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> sadly, not. sadly not. I know that the publishers try to, to sell them, but um, no, sadly, it didn't work out. So I still have a very I'm waiting for that. <laughs> hmm. I should probably talk to your publisher. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. I will. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a big part of Johanna was written during lockdown. I mean, not not the whole thing, but like the yeah. the, the hard the part, the, the, the yeah, one, when you have to get finished. And you have two children you had to homeschool. I mean, obviously your husband was at home as well and you did yeah. a lot of that together but nevertheless both of you are working so how did you actually manage to push through how did you stay motivated even when you I'm sure you feel knackered very often yeah. and drained and it yeah it was a tough time how did you manage to finish the book I have already I have absolutely no idea <laughs> I mean, I look, I look back at this month between March and June 2020, I see myself uh, in the children's room teaching math that I didn't understand a word because I'm really not good at math. And my, my 13 year old does, does uh, what's called in German, it's Wurzelberechnung. <laughs> binary forms yeah, i don't know what this is it's, in english no <laughs> yeah it's it's really it's it's not easy for me and uh no it was i thought i was teaching my children all the time and i really can't remember when i did it until um a friend of us um because we have a very small flat and we have no room there's there's no room for any one of us it's a two-room <laughs> flat so i don't have any burrow any room of my own so that's that's to Virginia Woolf. A room of my own would be lovely. And uh, um, so then the friend of ours stepped in and he said, "Well, I'm not in Vienna. House is uh, my house is is uh, left there. Um, do you, you want to move in for a couple of weeks or so?" And we did. And um, that was the time when I thought I finished that because mm -hmm. there was space. I could sit down in the evening times and disturb nobody by typing. <laughs> And uh, and so that was, I think, when I finished it, mainly. Amazing. You can be extra proud of yourself. I mean, to finish a book in itself is a huge achievement. Yeah. But doing that during such circumstances is, I mean, you should really, you know, store that feeling of pride of yourself about this achievement achievement for whenever ever ever the tiniest little bit of doubt ever hits you <laughs> which sometimes <laughs> I think everybody is affected by but actually have you ever doubted your career as a writer have you ever thought about oh, yeah. it up? often you do that with uh, I just read an interview with Monica Helfer who's mm -hmm. a uh, now quite successful writer she she hadn't been successful for ages <laughs> but mm -hmm. she's a really lovely writer and I, I like her work and she said um she, you start over every every new book. It's all mm. like you had no experience or not, did nothing before. You start with zero. Mm -hmm. And um, although you do know a lot of things that uh, will come up during the writing process, you know, um, you'll be enthusiastic through the seven, first seven pages, then you start writing, and then you come to 30 pages, and you go like, oh, this might not working out. And, then you have a huge crisis around the 70s uh so 70 pages long it's like oh, no, this is not good <laughs> and when you get to 100 pages that's like oh yeah this is going to be a book <laughs> <laughs> you know all these steps and you know your your flaws and you know um what things that you're good at um but you start all over again every time mm -hmm. which makes it so exhausting when you know oh this is something i will I will keep on doing for the next two years when you found your theme and you found your novel and mm -hmm. you're like, yeah this this will keep me up at night <laughs> for two yeah. years so, yeah. yeah i mean there's also um, a lot of artists are very very sensitive and i think self-doubt is 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 more something we face than than others people who are very sensitive are more 
questioning ourselves, I guess. And so, um, yeah. And then there's the, there's always the trap of comparison, which should all yeah, really always. be avoided all the time. But it, you compare yourself always to the more successful ones, to the ones that sell more books. And uh, you'd never compare yourself to the ones that haven't written probably four or five books and unpublished. And exactly. you compare yourself always to the big ones on the best selling list and go, why on earth I'm not on that list? <laughs> And then you go, oh yeah, that's why. <laughs> I mean, there's always someone above, obviously, or ahead, yeah. you know. I wonder how it would be for those who are actually, if there is someone who doesn't ha have someone obviously ahead of them, you know. I mean, I don't know who that would be because they're ever course, satisfied. Do you think so? I, I'm not I don't sure. think you're ever satisfied. I don't. I don't think that will ever stop. It's always if it's not if it's not the living ones, then it goes yeah, but I will never be Shakespeare. Yeah, sure. No, no one will ever be Shakespeare. <laughs> yes, not even Shakespeare is Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah, who was Shakespeare? Shakespeare. That is really it was my. It's it's probably, I don't know. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I don't know either. I don't know. <laughs> Who was Shakespeare? Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah. you right. always look up to, and you always think you can be more successful, and you want to sell more books or whatever. Uh, it is kind of toxic. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you got to step out of this carousel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just it will just brings you down and never up. No, no. Yeah, it's a dangerous circle or downwards spiral actually. As soon as you enter that, and yeah very dangerous should definitely be avoided but you also write plays and one of them was about Beethoven and mm -hmm. it's called the Unsterbliche Geliebte or the Undying Beloved and it premiered in Vienna not mm -hmm. just during a year that will forever be linked with this wonderful pandemic which is a miracle in itself because it had its premiere and it had its premiere in Vienna, but it was also the Beethoven year. So mm -hmm. what fascinated you about Beethoven and Josephine, his love interest in the play, mm -hmm. to tell this story about them? It's fascinating about Beethoven. Well, Beethoven is someone that um, uh, is always present every time I write because I use music to get in the right mood because um, as we talked before uh, we hardly have any time for writing and so you need to use it very effectively and um, to get into the right mood for the right scene I always use music um, so get the headphone on and uh, if it, it's a sad story or if it's a, a, a funny theme uh, something um, I, I need uh, the right music, so there's always some kind of soundtrack to every book, and Beethoven is always part of it. Mm -hmm. So um, when I wrote um, my second novel uh, about my great 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 grandfather um, and Rachel, and I listened a lot to uh, Moonlight Sonata, so Moonlight Sonata. <laughs> Moonlight Sonata, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and a lot of other Beethoven things. And that uh, is when I came up with a play. So I want to write about Beethoven himself. I didn't want to just, it's just a bit, it's a pity just to use it to get to something else. Mm -hmm. You've got to pay full attention to, to the musician himself. And so mm -hmm. this is how Beethoven happened. <laughs> Right. Yeah, you almost, I mean, I think you answered my next question because I wanted to say music plays an important role in, in basically all of your work in one or the other way. There's always some, some musical element that will actually be a driving force to an extent in the stories. Mm -hmm. So um, where does this affinity come from to music? music. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. It's a very musical family. So my father plays piano and uh, um Orgel? What's orgel in, in? Uh, <laughs> Oh, I will, I will I put it in, you know, I will put it somewhere in, in here. I will check yeah. it out and, and look in the dictionary and I will okay. put the um, word here. I, my, um, I play uh, the horn and, my, and the flute and I sing and my sister played the flute and the guitar and my... Um, Brother plays the trumpet, and uh, um, yeah, that's it. My mother is not so; <laughs> she's really into music, but he's not yeah. that um, 
yeah, she doesn't play any instrument. And so um, also my own family, my children do play instruments. My husband is very musician. So. Yeah. Yeah, so music yeah. is all around all the it's, time. It's always present. <laughs> it's just part of you. All, had always been and uh, yeah to use music as, as uh, a skill to um, yeah get to write in mm -hmm. um, that is I think it's something a lot of authors do do you do that, I too? that too yeah I, I also have some kind of a soundtrack for the characters that I create mm -hmm. both for when I act but also for I uh, also and also to find the mood and and the mm -hmm. theme um, I think Meryl Streep does the same so, yeah, no. <laughs> music, I'm, I'm not sure if she does you that, all the time, but for certain things, she, uh, when she needs a certain mood or a, mm -hmm. a certain emotion, she will listen to certain music. And I have heard about the others as well, but Meryl Streep is one of my heroes. So uh, <laughs> I kept that somewhere. And I also do that when I write um, screenplays, mm -hmm. maybe, uh, that I have some kind of a soundtrack and I, it's always linked then. I will never be able to disconnect them afterwards. <laughs> yeah, you can really go. Like, um, I always thought about uh, making a CD afterwards. <laughs> like, this was the soundtrack to this novel. This was the soundtrack yeah. to this novel. And nobody really, like, yeah, I didn't get it. <laughs> like, where is that music in that book? And you're like, but don't you hear that in the character? <laughs> <It's Yeah. laughs> and they go like, no. <laughs> <It's not. laughs> So, okay, uh, so next, you're currently writing short stories. What are they about, roughly? Well, it's, it's about uh, the same thing, like uh, the Christmas book was about, uh, yeah. was an advent calendar book with 24 stories about um, famous people from world history and uh, their very own Christmas disaster. And oh. this is about uh, uh, 25 people from world history and their summer holiday disaster. <laughs> So it's a summer book with loads of stories about love and passion and summer and holidays and it's always doing something wrong. <laughs> Stick, I can't wait to read them. <laughs> yeah, it's it's oh. funny right there. And you learn a lot. So uh, right now um, I'm working on a story about Bertha von Suppner. Ah, okay. And that's uh, funny because I always wanted to, to read more about Bertha von Suppner and so now I do. And you learn loads of things that you never thought you make any anything as you never never really thought you would, would deal with like um she was uh wasn't buried in, in Vienna after she died because she uh wanted to play um um how you say that uh, uh in crematorium um uh, cremated cremated, cremated. Yeah. Yeah. and so they got her from Vienna to Gotha in Germany where it was allowed to do yeah. that and now I'm trying to find out how she got there <laughs> How you can, how did you get a dead body in the year 1914 from Vienna to Gotha? You must have done that by train, but how? Yeah. <laughs> These are things you, you try to find out and that keeps you busy. And that is quite quite a thing because um, it really uh, is absolutely beside everything uh, that uh, my normal everyday life is about. Yeah. Where do you <laughs> research those things? Where do you find that? Ooh, I haven't found hardly anything. I had a few biographies. There wasn't much in it, but um, I downstairs have a lovely neighbor whose name is Friedrich, and I will ask him because he's absolutely fascinated about trains, and he <laughs> <laughs> so I have to ask him. He's a lovely guy, and so probably okay. That's a great resource. <laughs> 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 okay, finally, last question. So um, what are your three top tips for aspiring writers? Or I think it could be helpful for any artists in any area when they want to start out. And want to start random tips. Random tips. Oh, I think what, what's good for me must not be good for everybody. But um, what everybody, every writer will tell you is don't, don't stop writing just go on whether you're on a crisis or not or whether you do you know what you want to do or not just don't stop go on <laughs> and don't let anyone tell you not good enough for anything it will you will develop over the years so um even if you're not perfect when you start it, it will that 
is still a development and there's still something new to learn about and still something new to come up so um just try yourself out and mm -hmm. don't let yourself be limited by anything mm -hmm. just go on <laughs> If it's your dream, it's a dream and you go on and there's nothing to do about it. It's sometimes it's really going on your nerves. Probably you just want to let go because it's it's not leading you where you want it to go. But on the other hand, you just can't get off the train. <laughs> just go on and on. And yeah, just go with it. Yeah, go with the flow. <laughs> Thank Even you. If there's no flow, you need to go. <laughs> yes. Just push yourself <laughs> a bit. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. This was such a wonderful conversation. Thank you. It's lovely. Thank you so much for doing that. And next time we're seeing each other, I will be out of quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll see each other over real coffee. I mean, real coffee. I could have had coffee now, but I, I think we forgot. <laughs> or I, I already had mine. Uh, so. You had a coffee now, it's cold. That's classic. Yeah. <laughs> Mom's coffee is always cold. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it makes you, you know, I heard cold coffee kind of flattens your skin or something like that. I don't know. It was Coke. I don't know. No, I think my mom used to say that. <laughs> Caffeine. yeah when you put it on your skin it's I no but cold it's... coffee kind of um you know makes your skin wrinkle free or something like that. Okay. i don't know something I think like that's that. a myth. Sure it's wrong <laughs> it's just a myth yeah, I think <laughs> one of those <laughs> <laughs> okay so thank you so so much thank everyone who was watching this and make sure that you like this video because um if you're interested that her books are being translated in other languages. Maybe you can leave a comment down below and we oh, yeah. can let the publisher know, give them a little kick in the backside, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and if you haven't subscribed to our channel, make sure you do so and we'll see each other next week again. Take care, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ciao.